Now I want to look at an example where this vacuously true part applies. Vacuously true meant that when the hypothesis was false, so it didn't even get off the ground, then we were going to still say that the, true, the statement is true, but, but true in a sort of unimportant or, or uninteresting or vacuous sense. So consider this statement. If Trevor is a unicorn, then everyone gets an A in the class. So it is set up, this is an if P then Q. I can say this is an if P then Q statement, or alternatively, I can say it is a P implies Q statement. Now, what we know is that because I can turn a conditional like this into a disjunctive, into an or statement of the form not P or Q, let me try to rewrite this in that form. So in this statement, what I've said is either Trevor is not a unicorn, so this is the statement not P now, or everyone gets an A, that's the same statement I had before, that is again Q. When it's written in this form, however, when it's written in its disjunctive form, I think it's more obvious that we should say that that is true. Either Trevor is not a unicorn, or everyone gets an A. One of those two things is true. It turns out to be, uh, fortunately, the uh, Trevor is not a unicorn one. However, we still have this logical form that is equivalent to the first one that's written in its conditional or implication form. And it's because of examples like this that we say that it's vacuously true. Yes, this statement down here is true. Uh, one of these two things in my or statement is true, the Trevor's not a unicorn, but it's not interesting. That It's not an important conclusion. This statement doesn't really mean anything. I can say anything I want here. If pigs fly, then you get a million bucks. Uh, all of these statements are sort of true, but true in a vacuous sense.